In today's video, we'll dive into virtualization using VirtualBox on your computer. Virtualization may sound complex, but it's actually quite easy to understand. Imagine your computer as a toolbox filled with various resources like CPU, storage, and RAM, and a display. Virtualization takes all of these resources and lets you run almost any other operating system inside your current one. I'll be using Windows 11 as my main operating system, but we'll install Ubuntu, a version of Linux, on the same machine using VirtualBox inside Windows. It's pretty impressive. VirtualBox supports many guest operating systems, but Ubuntu is one that I think many of you will want to try out. If you want to learn more about virtualization, check out the written guide linked below for detailed information. The written guide covers the main topics in this video and much more. But in this video, we'll keep things simple and concise, saving you hours of research and watching multiple videos. By the end, you'll have a fully functional virtual machine running Linux on your computer. Plus, we'll cover how to share files and the clipboard with the host operating system. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into the exciting world of virtualization. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. To download VirtualBox, open your browser of choice and visit virtualbox.org. Click the Download VirtualBox button. And if your computer is running Windows, you'll select the Windows Host link. If you're using macOS, Linux, or Solaris, click the link for the operating system you're currently running, also known as the Host Operating System. I'm running Windows 11, so I'll click Windows Host. The download is relatively small, so it should go pretty quickly. Click the executable to begin the installation. From the welcome screen, click next. There's nothing that needs to change under custom setup, so go ahead and click the next button. The installer will warn you that your network connection will temporarily disconnect. If you're fine with that, click the yes button. And if prompted for missing dependencies, Click Yes to proceed with the installation. Now just click the Install button to install VirtualBox. Once the installation is complete, click the Finish button. VirtualBox will now start up. Before we can make use of VirtualBox, we'll need to download an operating system to install. We'll go ahead and take care of that next. In this segment, we'll download and install Ubuntu within VirtualBox. Open your browser and visit ubuntu.com. Click the link at the top right for Get Ubuntu. We could just click the download link here, but let's select Ubuntu Desktop. On the download page, we'll find version 22.04.4 LTS, which LTS stands for Long-Term Support. That is, updates will be supported for it until April of 2027. Below that is a link for 2310, which is maintained until July 2024. So we'll go ahead and pick the version 22.04.4 by clicking the download button. The download is nearly 5 gigabytes and may take several minutes depending on your internet connection. Now that we have VirtualBox installed, it's time to create our first virtual machine. Go ahead and launch VirtualBox, then on the top toolbar, click the New icon to create a new virtual machine. We'll now be prompted with some questions about the guest operating system we'll be installing. Click the drop down for ISO image and select other. Browse to the location of the Ubuntu ISO image that we just downloaded. Go ahead and select it and click the open button. Under folder, VirtualBox will default to your user folder However, I prefer to use a different location where I have more available storage. You can keep it at the default if you wish, or change it by clicking the drop down beside folder. Select Other, and then I'll navigate to my D drive and create a new subfolder called VirtualBox. Double click the folder and click the Select Folder button. Next, we'll give the virtual machine a helpful name. In this case, I'll keep it fairly simple and just name it Ubuntu-2010. 
22-04-4, but you can name it however you want. Keep in mind some special characters can't be used for the name. Next, check the Skip Unattended Installation option so we can see everything that occurs during the installation process. Once done, click the Next button. We'll now be prompted for how much memory and how many CPUs we want to allocate to this virtual machine. These numbers will vary based on the computer you're using. I recommend being rather conservative here with the settings and stay well within the green areas. The more resources you use for the VM, the less will be available for the host operating system. The computer I'm using here has 64 gigabytes of RAM, so I'll allocate 4 gigabytes. 4 gigabytes is the minimum recommended for Ubuntu, but I'll show you how to change it after installation later in this video. Likewise, there are 28 CPUs available, so I'll allocate 6 to the virtual machine. Two processors is the recommended minimum, so be sure you don't set it any lower than two here. Then click Next. Now we need to determine how much virtual disk space we're going to allocate to the virtual machine. Keep in mind the amount we allocate here is used by the VM to write the OS and anything else you install to the VM to a file. It's not partitioning the physical drive on your host computer but rather simply creating a file called a VDI or virtual disk image that can potentially store up to whatever amount of disk space you specify here. The minimum recommended for Ubuntu is 25 gigabytes, but I'll go ahead and set it to 32 gigabytes. What you use will depend on how much space you think you'll need and how much disk space you have available. I recommend being conservative here as well. Once set, Click the Next button. You'll now see a summary of everything you've defined for the virtual machine. Review it to see if there are any changes that you want to make. Once done, click the Finish button. We now have everything defined for our virtual machine and can begin the installation of Ubuntu. Click the Start icon from the top toolbar to power on our virtual machine. When Ubuntu first boots up, you'll see a notification bar to the right. After reading it, you can click the blue icon to hide it. Select the Try or Install Ubuntu option by pressing Enter to get started. The Ubuntu installation wizard will begin. At the welcome screen, verify the language selection is correct and click the Install Ubuntu button. For the keyboard layout, English English is good, so go ahead and click Continue. The defaults here should be fine. We want a normal installation and to download the updates while installing Ubuntu. We'll go ahead and click continue. As a reminder, the disk that will be erased is the VDI or virtual disk image, not a physical drive. There is nothing to change here. Click the install now button. When prompted, if you want to write the changes to the disk, simply click continue. The correct time zone should be selected for you. If not, just click the map to change it. Once done, click the continue button. We'll now create a login and password for Ubuntu. Enter your name, and you can change the computer's name if you wish, or leave it as is. Then enter your password twice. I'll leave the option to require my password to log in. However, you can select for Ubuntu to log in automatically if you prefer. Once done, click the Continue button. At this point, Ubuntu will begin copying all files, installing Ubuntu, and preparing the operating system. Once done, click the Restart Now button to reboot the virtual machine. After it reboots, I'll go ahead and log back in. We'll then have to step through a few more quick things. You can set up online accounts if you want. I don't, so I'll just click Skip. If you want to upgrade to Ubuntu Pro, you can select the option, but for now, I'll just stick with the standard version and click Next. I'll not send any info about this machine at the present time, but I may change that later. I'll select No and click Next. I prefer not to send my location information, so I'll just click Next. Additional apps can be downloaded and installed, but we'll just click Done. And that's it. We have successfully installed Ubuntu in VirtualBox. 
However, there are a few more things I'd like to show you before we end this video that I think you'll find very helpful, such as how to update Ubuntu, uh, how to share the clipboard, transfer files into and out of the virtual machine, and how to change the virtual machine configuration itself. Oh yeah! But before we do, let's take a quick look around some of the options available within VirtualBox. Within the VirtualBox Manager, you'll find various preferences that you can set that are global across all the virtual machines you create. Depending on resources available on your computer, you can run several at the same time. With the Tools option, you can add pre-existing virtual machines, create a new one, or import or export the virtual machine image to share it with someone else or as a backup. If you select the virtual machine we just created for Ubuntu, if it's powered off, we can click Start to power it on. With the VM powered off, we can also adjust various settings such as adding additional RAM, CPUs, and much more that we'll cover in a few moments. With the VM powered on, we can press the right control key, also known as the host key, and F at the same time to toggle between full screen mode. For this to work, we'll need to install the guest additions, which we'll add shortly. When in full screen mode, if we hover the mouse at the bottom, it'll reveal options to exit full screen mode and much more. You can also use snapshots, which basically saves the current state of the machine and allows you to go back at any time. From the icon on the machine, you can change to snapshots, view activity, and much more. If you need to pause the VM to free up resources on the host computer, just select pause from the menu option and again to unpause. You can also reset the machine, which is the same as pressing the reset button to reboot the VM. Of course, you also have the Firefox web browser pre-installed, along with many other useful applications and a software store for downloading more. There is a lot to explore here, so definitely take a look around. Now we'll go over some helpful tips. Shortly after your first boot, you'll likely see this dialog indicating there are software updates available. You can expand the details to see what updates were found, then simply click the Install Now button. Enter your password, then once all the updates have been applied, click the Restart Now button. To update from a terminal, click the Show Applications icon in the lower left, select Terminal, you can also right-click the icon on the left-hand side to add Terminal as a favorite, which will always show the icon on the left-hand side. Then from the terminal, just type in sudo, S-U-D-O, A-P-T, update, and enter your password. From there, all the packages will get updated. I want to quickly show you a few things we're going to improve by installing guest additions which is essentially a package that will install within Ubuntu to provide improved integration with VirtualBox. For example, if I maximize the window, Ubuntu doesn't automatically scale to the window. We'll improve that. Also, if I open a text editor and type something in and copy it to the clipboard, then bring up Notepad in Windows 11, the host operating system, the contents of the clipboard isn't shared. There are more features provided by guest editions that we'll also discuss in a few moments. To install guest editions, we'll insert the CD image, click the Devices menu option, and click the Insert Guest Edition CD Image option. If we look on the launcher to the left, we'll see the CD image has been added. Open that, and then right-click on the autorun.sh file, and select Run as a Program. Enter your password and the guest additions will be installed. Once done, press enter and then click the icon in the upper right, select power off and restart. Once restarted, we no longer need the CD image and can remove it by selecting machine, then settings, select storage, and then under IDE controller, select the ISO image. Click the small CD icon and select Remove Disk from a Virtual Drive. You'll then see the disk image disappear from the launcher. To enable clipboard sharing, either from the menu option 
or directly in VirtualBox, just click Settings, click the Advanced tab, for Share Clipboard, set it to Bidirectional, and the same if you want to allow drag and dropping of files. Then just click the OK button. Now if I bring up the text editor in Ubuntu, then type in some text and go ahead and select it and copy it to the clipboard by pressing Ctrl plus C. Now I'll bring over Notepad in Windows and go ahead and paste. And now the clipboard can now be shared between the Ubuntu guest and the Windows host. You'll also find that when you maximize the window, Ubuntu desktop will scale automatically. You can also select the view menu to go full screen if you'd like. Next, I'll show you how to set up a shared folder between the Ubuntu guest operating system and the Windows 11 host. From the top menu, select Machine and Settings. Select Shared Folders. Now we need to create a folder on our Windows 11 host computer that we want to share with Ubuntu. I'll open File Explorer on my D drive. I happen to have more space available on that drive. I'll then double click on the VirtualBox folder and right click and create a new folder and I'll just call it VBox Share. Now we'll switch back to Ubuntu and click the small folder icon with the plus sign. Click the drop down for the folder path, select other, and browse to the folder we want to share. In our case, it'll be on the D drive, VirtualBox, and VBox Share. Then click select folder. Now we want to click the checkbox for auto mount so that the share gets mounted properly. Then click OK and OK again. There is one more quick step we need to do before we can access the share. Open a terminal. Remember that you may have added it as a favorite from earlier on the launcher. Now type, who am I? All one word. What we see here is the name of the user we want to provide access to the shared folder. Next, type in sudo, S-U-D-O, add user, and the name shown while typing who am I, in my case it's John, and then following that, VBox SF. Take a brief look here at the entire command. Then just press enter and enter your password. And now we've provided access to the user to access the share we created. Now if we click the files icon, we'll see our new share in the lower left called SF underscore VBox share. If we select it, we'll see our empty folder. I'll right click and select new folder and enter a name of from Ubuntu. Then double click on the folder. I'll now open the text editor, type in some text, click save, and save it to our SF VBox share from Ubuntu folder and call it somefile.txt and click the save button. Back in Windows, I'll navigate into the same path and see our somefile.txt file. If I double click it, we can see the contents of the file in Notepad. We could add more text if we want and resave the file. Adding a shared folder is a great way to share files between the host and guest operating system. You may recall earlier that I allocated four gigabytes of RAM for this virtual machine. Now if we look at the system monitor, and then select Resources, we can see with almost nothing running, about 27% of the available RAM is being used. But we can change that. Just click the icon in the upper right, select Power Off, and power off the virtual machine. Now we can go into Settings, select System, and I'll increase the RAM to 6 gigabytes. We could also select display and increase the amount of video memory available if we want. Ah, that's good. I'll go ahead and click OK. Now when we start up the VM, we'll see there is now 6 gigabytes of RAM and we're only utilizing 19%. That brings us to the end of another video. I hope that you found using VirtualBox is a great way to get started with virtualization on your computer. Remember, VirtualBox will let you run most any operating system, 
you are certainly not limited to Ubuntu. If you'd like to see how to set up another operating system with VirtualBox, just let me know in the comments below what you would like to see. If you found this video helpful, please let me know by clicking the like button. It definitely helps with the YouTube algorithm show this video more often. If you would like to see more how-to videos like this one and you haven't already subscribed, I hope you'll consider doing so. And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.